Hi, my name is John from Japanese Knife Imports, and today we're going to discuss thinning knives, uh, the basic concepts, and kind of how to go about it a little bit. And uh, hopefully, very soon, we'll also have a chance to shoot a video demonstrating uh, the thinning process. So, in this video, what I want to cover with you is a little bit about thinning double bevel knives and a little bit about thinning single bevel knives. Uh, single, bevel, single bevel knives are a little bit easier to do because the thinning process is, is built into their structure, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Uh, but the double bevel knives require, uh, I guess, a little bit of courage and uh, a little bit of effort. And uh, so let's go over what goes on with your knives. So I have this image here. And in this image, I show uh, your basic knife structure, which is this outermost line here. This is what your knife looks like, let's say, when you buy it new. Obviously, this is blown up and it's not proportional, but you get the sense. Over time, you sharpen roughly at the same angle that your original edge was done at. So you see that here and here. As you go up, you notice that the area behind your edge gets thicker. What that means is this. When you're cutting something, there are two parts of your knife that affect the cut. First is your edge, how sharp it is, what level of grit or refinement you've taken it to, how clean it is. That dictates how your cut is going to begin. So when you're cutting like tomatoes, that, that dictates how it's going to start the cut through the skin. The next part that dictates how your cut is going to be is the geometry behind the edge, how thick or thin your knife is right behind that actual cutting edge. So when you're cutting, say, potatoes or squash, and you have a very thin knife, your knife is going to move through cleanly and quickly without wedging or sticking. And when you have a much thicker knife, it's going to wedge and stick and push food really hard away. And so when you cut carrots, for example, you'll see that they crack. Or when you cut potatoes, they, they wedge and crack off. Um, so over time, you'll notice that your knives tend to do this more and more because they're getting thicker and thicker behind the edge, uh, as we showed here in this image. So there's a solution to that, and it's called thinning behind the edge. And what you do essentially is you sharpen at a more acute angle than what you would normally sharpen at. So here you can see the, the first edge, and here is the second edge that you would do as you sharpen up over time. And here is another line that shows a more acute angle. So you sharpen here, and now you have control over how thick your knife is behind the edge. So I have another image here that I can show that shows two different kinds of edges. This bottom one here is what most people do, where the edges just kind of sharpen normally, and there's no thinning that occurs. This top one is actually much more appropriate, and it shows uh, an, an angle, a bevel, that's set up to, to be thinned each time you sharpen. So every time you sharpen, you can do that thinning process. And what you see here is a top bevel up here, which is your thinning, and the second bevel down here, which is your cutting edge, your primary cutting edge, and some people use a micro bevel. So every time you sharpen, what you'll do is you'll sharpen this top part here, then you'll sharpen your primary cutting edge and make sure that you have a nice clean edge. And that way, you can maintain the geometry of your knife over time so that you can keep it thin behind the edge, and you can actually make adjustments that, depending on your personal preferences or the kind of things you're cutting uh, or the tasks that you may have uh, that day at work or at home, um, so that you can, you know, if you know that you're going to cut a lot of squash, you can thin down your knife. Uh, but be careful because you can always remove metal, but you can't add, add metal back on. So if you thin a knife too much, you're going to end up with a weaker edge. And that's always the trade-off that you get. The more you thin, the more fragile your edge will be. So as you go about this process, take it slow and, uh, and see how things go. One of the things that scares people about thinning is that they're going to scratch up the sides of your knife. And, uh, and quite frankly, you will. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, your knives are tools. They're meant to be used. And uh, a little bit of scratching here and there isn't such a big deal. You can always clean it up. You can use sandpaper and you can use rust erasers. So it's nothing to be really afraid of. Uh, and more important than scratching up your knife is making sure that your knife cuts the way that it's supposed to, since that's its job after all. So to give you an idea of kind of roughly the amount of thinning that one might do, I have this image here that shows your basic blade shape. And you can see I have the edge here and a line right above the edge. And that would kind of indicate where your primary cutting edge would be. And above that, there's another line. And that would indicate roughly where your thinning uh, bevel may begin. And of course, this is just as an example. It may be taller than that. It may be shorter than that. And that's really going to depend on how far up you want to thin your blade. Uh, and, and it's something to consider when you think about the overall geometry of your knife. Um, so, really quickly to discuss uh, single bevel knives before we run out of time here. Uh, here is an image with single bevel knives. 
Here you can see a cross section of a single bevel knife and you can see here that the, the back is hollow ground and the table of the knife is flat and here is the bevel and it's a compound bevel much in the same way uh, that I just showed you double bevel knives could be. Um, as you move up the gist of it is that the shinogi line here moves up at the same rate that the edge moves here. So if you remove two millimeters from your edge your shinogi line moves up two millimeters and that's what keeps your geometry of the blade the same over time so you can see uh, what occurs here in this image. And all of these images, by the way, can be found at our blog, uh, blog.japaneseknifeimports.com. So you can see a little bit better detail of what it is that I'm talking about here. Um, one last thing to cover is the difference between solid steel knives, honyaki and zenko knives, uh, versus clad knives, like uh, honkasumi and uh, homorikomi. Uh, with clad knives, it's very important that you thin equally on both sides of the knife. Uh, for double bevel knives. Obviously for single bevel knives uh, that wouldn't be the case at all. But for double bevel knives you want to thin equally on both sides of the knife so that your cutting edge always remains as the core steel and not part of the cladding steel. For solid steel knives, honyaki knives and zanko knives, you can thin on one side primarily if you would like, but better than that is to thin on both sides of the knife. It doesn't necessarily have to be done perfectly equally, uh, but it's a very good idea to do it on both sides of the knife. as Generally speaking, uh, the knives do have some taper uh, geometry-wise in both ways. One may be a little bit more steep than the other. Uh, again, it will always depend on the maker and uh, how that particular knife has been designed, but it's, it's almost never a good idea to do the thinning entirely on one side. Uh, it will cause your knife to steer in ways that you may not appreciate and, and also is not really what the makers intend. Um, so, as always, if you have questions, you can email us at john at japaneseknifeimports.com or you can check out our website at japaneseknifeimports.com. Thank you so much.